Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. It is Thursday night and welcome to another episode of Lean and Green Live here on What's the Risk. We've got a few minutes I wanna wait just for everybody to get on board. Um, and I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor. First of all, I want you to get a pen or whatever your favorite writing utensil is and a piece of paper because you are gonna to wanna to take some notes because I'm so excited. We have got some amazing recipes to share with you today. Of course, the big game this weekend, Valentine's Day not too very far away, so I'm gonna give you all kinds of yummy lean and green recipes that are gonna be able to keep you on track, but never, ever, ever feeling deprived. And you know, that really is my whole mission in doing this is that this lean and green lifestyle, as we've been talking about in the group, it's this is a mindset that we're making for the rest of our lives. We really wanna be changing things for the long run, so my Hope is uh, that you will continue to follow along and so that I can inspire you and show you that eating lean and green is awesome and it works. I put myself back on program with the challenge as well. I'm down seven pounds, so I'm really excited about that because I'm sure like all of you, you know, we kind of struggle. We've got these couple of pounds. We go up, we go down. I don't know. I have a friend who tells me she loses 10 pounds and it changes her life. I think I could lose 10 pounds in my sleep. <laughs> Not that it's that easy, but I mean, like, I'm just one of those people. You lose 10 pounds. It's like, all right, where'd it go? Where'd it come from? But I digress. So you got that pen and paper? All right. Well, we're going to get started in a few minutes, but I thought it would be kind of fun with the Super Bowl starting. Let's start with some alternate facts here. Rather than wanting to hear from you who you think is going to win the Super Bowl, I want everybody to post who their favorite team is that should have won the Super Bowl. So go ahead, get it out of your system. If you were a Steelers fan, whoever your favorite team was, put it down there if you think that they should have won. So let's kind of get a little pool going and a little fun camaraderie and see, you know, what do we think? You know, football, America, food, it all goes hand in hand. And of course, there's all kinds of Super Bowl parties that are coming up next weekend. And, and um, I always stress about parties, and I don't know about you guys, because you know you go and everybody brings the best of the best, which is really the worst of the worst, and you really just kind of want to nibble on everything, and it's not necessarily the healthiest stuff, and it's in February, everybody's on program and getting started, and the last thing you want to do is go and totally throw yourself off program. So I have a couple of suggestions for you. Oh, I got Jackie making eyes at me from behind the camera because my trusty assistant Jackie is womaning questions this evening. So Jackie, do we have one? We, well, it's not a question, but it's a little, yeah. So we have Steph says the Dallas Cowboys. All right, Steph, on that. the Cowboys. Donna says the Panthers. All right. And that's it. <laughs> All right. So we've got a couple of football fans out there. But anyway, we're talking about these appetizers, right? So I really want for you to enjoy some holiday, holiday, <laughs> I'm still in holiday mode, Super Bowl appetizers that aren't going to throw you off program. So I have a couple of suggestions for you. First, we're going to go over some recipes tonight. But when it comes to the party itself, let me give you a couple of tips. Um, and this goes no matter what time of year or what parties you're going to. And first and foremost, it's please don't go hungry. Have some water. Have a shake before you go. Do something to fill up your system so that when you get there, you're not ravenous. And then secondly, before you go through that buffet line, take a look at what's there. Don't go through with your plate right away. Just, you know, take a walk around and see what you have. And if there's something you really want to splurge on because it looks delicious, then make a note that that's the thing you're going to splurge on. And then what all the other stuff you're going to load up on that's, uh, you know, that's on program and good for you is going to be. So kind of strategize a little bit. So don't go hungry, strategize. And then another thing that I thought was a great idea, someone posted this on one of the other sites and I forget which one it was, um, but they basically said that when you do go through that buffet line, go through with a plastic spoon, just a regular teaspoon. And don't use the big serving spoons from the buffet, use the teaspoon so that you're just taking one little bite of whatever it is you're eating. Cause you know what happens, right? You go through that line and it's like Thanksgiving, by the time you're done, you took just one little scoop of everything, but now you got a whole big plate of food, right? So. Ugh, strategize, think, don't drink your calories, load up on seltzer, um, whatever the case may be. And last but not least, if it's possible, 
If you've got a long-standing tradition and parties you go to, then by all means go to them. But if you're looking to celebrate, get some of your other friends who are on program and get everybody together so that you have a 100% on program Super Bowl party. So that way you don't have to stress and you don't have to worry. But in the event you are going to a traditional party, I want to share with you today some great recipes and I'm going to make one for you right in front of your very little eyes as well um, that you're going to love not just for Super Bowl but also potentially for Valentine's Day as well. So let's get started. Now first and foremost, I have for you um, the Lean and Green worksheet for this uh, for this episode. And where you're going to find this is up at the top of the um, the top of the feed, right underneath the What's the Risk logo where all the people are jumping up there. There is a button that says Files. So just click on that Files button and you'll see all of the worksheets that are on there. This one's not up there yet, but when the episode is over, I will upload this. And then you can just click on it. It's a PDF. You can print it out. Share it with your friends. I give everybody permission, especially if you're a health coach and you want to get this information out to your clients. Please feel free to share this with everybody. You have my permission to do that. In addition, you'll also notice those buttons up there. There's a video button up there. So every single video that's been recorded, not just of mine, but of JC's and the guest speakers that are up there as well, you're going to see um, all of those are categorized in the videos button as well. So anytime you want to go back and rewatch one of these episodes, you can do that. And I also discovered last week, and forgive me, I forget who it was I was talking to, but one of the health coaches was saying she was actually able to share the entire video right on her personal timeline so that people could watch it. So, boy, if you're a health coach, what a great opportunity for you to take my videos, JC's videos, any of the videos, and just share them on the timeline. It's another way for you to be able to reach your clients and, and let them know about this great group that we've got because, as JC has said, it's all about bringing people on board and sharing and paying it forward. So paying it forward is what we're talking about today. And I want to talk about some Super Bowl appetizers. All right, so first I'm going to give you some suggestions for some basic things that you're probably already making. You know, we talk about first and foremost, how about veggie trays, right? That's the best thing that you can bring with you. It's quick, it's easy, it's portable. Load up on those raw veggies. They're going to fill you up. They're fresh, they're colorful, they're tasty. But the question then comes in to be, well, what are we going to dip them in, right? <laughs> because everybody loves a good dip, right? So here is my suggestion for you. On any Super Bowl recipes where you might otherwise use um, fat-laden mayonnaise, use your Greek yogurt instead. Um, a non-fat or a 2% yogurt is actually on program, and I forget, I think it's 12 ounces, although don't count don't um, hold me to that. Take a look at the uh, at the sheet. But that actually is considered a lean, a whole, I think it's like a cup and a half. So that is a lot, lot, lot of yogurt to be eating. Now, how do you flavor it? You basically take a cup of yogurt to a tablespoon of seasoning and mix it together and let it sit for about half of an hour. That's it, that white yogurt, just like the mayonnaise or the sour cream, is basically just a vehicle for the flavor. So whether you use one of my seasonings, and I especially love like, potent things like the Tuscan fantasy or the gar uh, see Monty. the Tuscan fantasy or the garlic gusto um, garlic and spring onion or the simply brilliant um, or even just the ranch any of those are really good and they um, bring out the flavor and are great accompaniment for the dip now along the lines of mayonnaise as well, it also brings me next to a really popular favorite which is deviled eggs, right? Everybody loves, loves, loves deviled eggs. And eggs are also on program as is the yogurt on program. So by rule of thumb, if you're going to boil six eggs which will yield 12 deviled eggs for you, um, you're going to take and scoop out the yolks, mix them with a little squirt of mustard, probably about a quarter of a cup of um, your yogurt, and then some seasoning. My favorite for that is like the citrus dill or some fresh dill and some parsley. But you just whisk it together and then put it back in the eggs and away you go. Cajun seasoning is also really good on that. And um, uh, eggs are considered a lean as well. So really easy, really simple. Um, now let's talk about some of the things that we really love but that are really not so great for us, but there are some great faux-turnatives for it. You like that word? Um, that's a stasism. <laughs> a faux-turnative. So we think about crispy fried foods, those things that we love like chicken tenders or even like zucchini sticks. I want to share with you a real easy way to be able to make those. And I have this listed on the worksheet for you, although there's no real hard and true recipes for them. But basically take your chicken fingers, which would be like a chicken tenderloin, or you can even use a whole piece of chicken breast, just cut it into strips. 
and then whisk two eggs together and take the meat or your veg, like if you want to do the, your zucchini sticks, then just cut them into sticks, dip them in the egg, and then you'll roll them in one of three things, depending on where you are on program. I actually love the um, MetaFast cheese puffs. You can take those and you can just crunch them up right in the bag and turn them into breadcrumbs and they have some flavoring to them as well. You can roll the roll whatever it is, the meat or the veg in the egg, then roll it in the breadcrumbs and then put it on a cookie sheet. So the cookie sheet you should spray with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray or even better yet, one of the things I love to do is on that cookie sheet, put your cookie cooling rack first so that you have the rack on top of the cookie sheet and then put whatever it is you're cooking on top of it. And the reason I love that is this, is you know, if you were just to take that piece of whatever it is you're cooking and slap it down on the cookie sheet, it, the bottom winds up getting soggy. But if you put it on the cooling rack, then the air gets all around it and the whole thing crisps up. So it's almost just like deep fat frying it. So in that case, you're gonna put it in a hot oven like 375 degrees and you're gonna cook like if it's chicken, probably 15, 20 minutes depending on how thick it is. And the same thing with your veg as well. And you can do that combination with just about anything. Now I said you're gonna use one of three things. You can either use the MetaFast cheese puffs if you have them. You can also use something called TVP or texturized vegetable protein. And what that is, it's a Bob's Red Mill product that you can find wherever you find um, the Bob's products. Um, comes in a bag and it's, uh, it's soy protein that's in flakes. And again, you just crisp that up, throw a little seasoning in with it. You can use one of mine, you can use some salt and pepper, you can use some garlic powder, whatever it is, and roll it just like you would the Metafast puffs. And then the third thing that you can use is a scant amount of panko breadcrumbs. So again, the panko you're gonna need to count as a condiment. You don't don't need to use a lot of it um, but again it'll give you that crisp texture so that's a great way to be able to get some fried foods or the feeling of eating some fried foods in there um, instead and if you're talking about wanting to create some sauces to go with that well Frank's Red Hot is like the classic go-to for your buffalo chicken um, and that is totally approved on program um, we talked before about making the dips if you make the ranch dip you can thin it out with just a little bit of unsweetened almond milk just to make it a little um, more of a loose consistency so that you can drizzle it. Um, that makes a good topping. Uh, or you can use any of the other on-program approved salad dressings for that. But again, watch your condiments because all that will add up. So there's a couple of great ideas for you. Um, wanna make sure I covered everything here. Yep, and I did. So those are some real basics for common everyday appetizers that we use um, and that we enjoy. So do I have a question? Oh, she's pushing me back, which is okay because I am about to cook. Because here we talk about all these great appetizers that we wanna make. But you say, you know, Stace, after halftime and after I eat all the savory stuff, what about the sweets? And Valentine's Day is coming around too, so what am I going to do about something sweet and yummy? Well, of course, one go-to that's really easy, and I've seen a lot of posts online where people are taking, um, especially like the, the cherry chocolate shakes and turning them into brownies. And there are some great ways to do that, um, the, the recipes online that you can follow for that. Or I have a great alternative for you, um, a recipe that I stumbled upon and monkeyed around with a little bit over the course of the week, much to my kids and my own delight. And it is our recipe of the week this week, and it is for dark chocolate mousse that is so heavy and so dense and so chocolatey and so yummy that you're going to say to me, all right, Stacy. well, how in the world is it on program? Well, not only is it on program, it is no carbs whatsoever. That is how exciting this is because it's all based, believe it or not, on the mighty, oh, I cut them all up. Hand me that one. Ready? Chuck it to me. The mighty avocado. That's right, an avocado. And no, we're not making chocomole. Here, you can have it back. We're not making chocomole by any stretch of the imagination. We are making this smooth, rich, creamy, decadently delicious dessert that believe it or not, a third of a cup, which doesn't sound like much, but I'll show you how much it actually is. And it's so rich and it's so dense that you really don't want to eat more than that. But a third of the cup actually yields. You ready for this? Three ounces is just two healthy fats and one condiment. That's it, right? 
two healthy fats and one condiment and let me show you how easy this is to make and how absolutely delicious it is. Jackie, I'm going to ask you to kind of cut me out of the camera here and let's go right down here to the, uh, right down to the countertop. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna start with, can you see this if I hold it here? Yes, Perfect, so I've got two ripe avocados that I have pitted and I have scooped out the flesh and it's only two and they're medium size and they are on the soft side. I'm gonna put those in here. To that, I am going to add one half of a cup of baking cocoa. This is dark baking cocoa, it is unsweetened. There is no sugar in this whatsoever. Um, and it is just cocoa powder. So I've got my half cup. I'm going to sprinkle that in there. Next, I am going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. Now, this is part of the recipe that you can change. I would always put in one teaspoon of vanilla, but if you want to change up the flavor of this a little bit, you can add a raspberry extract, a lemon extract. Uh, uh, today, I'm going to add a little bit of almond extract just to give it a little bit of a different flavor. Um, I don't, don't know, did I say raspberry? That was one of my yeah. favorites this week as well. There's nothing like that flavor of chocolate and raspberry together. Now, for my sweetness, because we do need some sweet in here, I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of stevia powder. Now, this is a dark chocolate mousse, so it does have more of a bitter sweet flavor to it. If you want it a little sweeter, you can add a little bit more of the stevia powder. But again, it's stevia, it's all natural, we're not using any artificial sweeteners here. And I am gonna add just a scant bit more. Last but not least, because we do need some liquid in here, I have one quarter of a cup of unsweetened vanilla almond milk. You could use cashew milk as well. Just make sure again that you do not use the sweetened stuff. And I'm also going to put in just a little scant pinch of salt. Um, and that's a personal preference of mine. I like the feeling of the um, of the real heavy chocolate with just a tiny bit of salt to cut it. But again, your preference may vary. All right, I'm going to turn this on. You'll see, I'll turn this sideways so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm pulsing this so that the larger chunks of the avocado wind up falling down and in. And what this is doing is it's whipping the avocado to make it really, really, really smooth. It's also incorporating the air in there. So you're going to need about a minute, maybe a minute and a half tops. I'm going to stop this because I just want to scrape down my sides. As soon as I turned on the food processor, of course, all that cocoa powder kind of puffed up and in. So I'm going to scrape it down once. Turn this back on. Are done and do we have some chocolate mousse here let me just grab a spoon okay. sorry all right so I want you to see this first of all let me show you this in the food processor Jackie's standing behind there with her mouth open like a guppy so and I want you to see how thick this is right absolutely thick and delicious all right I'm gonna give in how is it so I'm pulling out of the fridge right now because I want you to see what a third of a cup yields like. Now you see how big this bowl is, right? I put it in a real fancy glass and um, this is a third of a cup. So this is actually a serving size. Jack, I'm just going to ask you to tip yeah. that up just a little bit. And I'm telling you, this is so, so, so delicious. The mouthfeel on this is so thick and so heavy and so decadent because again, it is that pureed avocado 
but it is just so yummy. Now I will say on the back side, meaning once you've swallowed it, it does leave a tiny little bit of an earthy flavor in your mouth and that's from two things. It's what they call the umami flavor from the avocado, but it's also from that antioxidant rich, really delicious dark cocoa powder. And there's all different kinds of dark cocoa powder that you can use, um, but again, you're gonna find it in the baking aisle and you want the dark stuff. So real simple, really easy. The key is the food processor. Please do not try to do this in a traditional blender. I'm not quite sure how this would work out in a Ninja for you. I know a lot of people are using Ninjas. If you've had experience, in fact, that's a great question to ask. Does anybody have experience pureeing avocados in their Ninja? If so, would you, would you just kind of put something in the um, comments there so that we know if it's gonna work or not? Um, then that would be really great. But this is a magnificent dessert for you to serve for Valentine's Day as well. It's fantastic for you to serve for your, um, for your Super Bowl party. Um, in fact, you could even take, if you wanted to take a half a portion of this and put it on top of one of those Metafest brownies, you could do that too. Think of how decadent that is. Jackie's like rolling her eyes and drooling behind the camera. But the truth of the matter is, it's, this is real food. It's really yummy, it's really delicious, it's really good for you. It's really simple and easy, just like all the other appetizer recipes that I shared with you. So again, all those recipes will be on the worksheet that I will upload in just a few minutes time, and then I will also go ahead and make sure that uh, the video gets posted for you as well. Please feel free to comment. If you have any questions, um, let me know. You can uh, just put them right here in the string and I'll be responding throughout the week and if there is anything else you need by all means I am here for you next week we're going to focus a little bit more on lean and vegetarian recipes and we're talking about all good things heart healthy for um, February and heart health month so I am Stacey Hawkins thank you so much for joining me on another episode of lean and green live I wish you all the best this week stay on program stay on track and have a great time on Sunday be safe please don't drink and drive and have a great time no matter who wins the Super Bowl good night everybody